Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, MATLAB Video. In this video, we will look at some MATLAB simulations using least square method. So the first example is the one we um, actually went through earlier, the one using linear regression for um, T and S, um, where T is the temperature and S is the surface tension of a liquid that we tested. So we try to fit in a linear function and then we have found out what A and B are. So what I'm going to show you here is actually um, the plot of two things. One is the blue line here, which is the straight line that we found by solving it with, with the least square method. And the red circles are my data. So we observe that um, the least square solution goes kind of a goes through the data. So part of the data lies above and part of the data lies below. And some of them lies very close to the line. So this is actually um, the general situation if you fit in a least square method solution. Your curve or line will have to go through the data. Okay, so separating data into kind of a two parts, one part on the top, one part on the bottom. And if you did not get that, if all your points are above the line, then um, something's wrong. You did not compute it correctly. Okay, let's take another example. Say we have um, some measurements from the North Sea and um, at some time interval, let's say two units time interval, let's say each unit is an hour, so every two hours I measure the height of the water at one spot. So we know water waves, they're called waves because they um, kind of oscillate, so these are periodic functions and typically characterized by sine and cosine function. So the function I would try to fit in here, ht, would be a constant term plus a sine function term times a1 and a cosine function term times a2. And the sine and cosine function, they have the same frequency. Okay, basically it's pi t over 6 here. So the question is, trying to fit in a function like this by choosing suitable a0, a1, or a2, so this ht best fit my data. Okay, so we know this is a linear least square method with three functions. One is 1, the other is sine, and the last one is cosine. So we can set up the normal equations by differentiating the error function with respect to each of these a's. And if we do that, then this is the system that we get. Okay, And uh, you would want to rewrite it again, writing it into um, clearly a system to solve for the a0, a1, and a2. Okay, so um, here's what we did. So we um, distribute the summation sign on each, okay, and then um, we sum them up and then pull the a's outside the summation sign because a does not have the k in it. So this becomes my um, normal equation, okay? And you see, um, in order to set up this normal equation, actually the kind of the computationally heavy part is to compute all these sums. You have to keep your head clear what are the sums that I have to compute and where do they go into these normal equations. So we notice we need to compute the sum over sine cosine and then sine sine square cosine square cosine squares here and also um, sine times cosine which appears um, here, sine times cosine, sine times cosine, and also um, hk times 1, hk times sine, hk times cosine. Okay. So what we were going through next will be um, a MATLAB code that will solve this problem. So you have homework problems similar to this, so hopefully the MATLAB code will help you get started and solve it more quickly. Okay, so 
remember what we have to do and then let, let's look at the MATLAB code. So I generate my T vector and my H vector, those are the data. And then I compute the length of the T vector so I know how many points. And since this quantity pi over 6 appears everywhere in the sine cosine function, I just give it a value to some something I called VA. And then I know I need to compute all these sum. So in principle a sum is a for loop. But in MATLAB, this is already programmed, so you can just call the function sum. So you do sign, you send in VA times T, and then this returns a vector, and you send this vector to this sum, and it will add all the elements up and return the value in S1. Okay? And then for the cosine, you will have it in S2. And then you know you also need to compute those summing over all sine square. So you will have sine of this, and remember, you have to use the dot to the power 2 because this will generate a vector, and that's what you need. Okay, And then send it to the sum and say, save it in S3. And then cosine times sine, the same way, make sure you did the dot multiply, so this becomes a vector. Okay, And then cosine square, you have to do dot power. And you put all these into S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now, since A is only a 3 by 3 matrix, is reasonably small, I would just construct it manually by hand like this, So, I, because I know exactly which of this S goes in where in the A matrix. And then we need to do the, the right-hand side vector, which I call H here. So remember, it's just the sum over all the H, the first element, and the second is H times sine. Notice I have a dot product here to make sure that the end is a vector. And the last one is h times the cosine, so it's a dot multiply again here. Okay, And then you can just solve this system by calling the MATLAB um, simple um, Gaussian elimination with pivoting. So it's same as inverse a times h. Okay, And then I would also like to visualize my result. I want to plot my um, least square approximation together with the data and to see how well it's doing. So I need to generate an x vector for plotting purpose. And this is a vector from 0 to 12 and taking intervals sufficiently small so the graph will look nice. So here I took 0 0.05. And then I compute fx which is exactly the least square approximation at all the points in this um, x here, so a1, and then a2 times sine, and a3 times cosine. And then I can plot them together with one command of plot. So plot x against fx with blue curve, and then I plot my data t against h with red circle. Okay, so let's see how what result it gives me. So first, the code gives me the coefficients a0, a1, and a2. These will be the a1, a2, a3 in the a vector, and I list it here, that's what I get. And then the plot looks like this. So you see the blue line, some kind of a sine, cosine, some sine, cosine shifted with a phase shift. And then the red circles are my um, data. And then we notice that my curve kind of goes through the data, leaving some above and some below, which is typical for a least square solution. Okay, so hope you um, enjoyed this and hope this was useful. And uh, I'll see you next time.